Let's talk about another hot issue in wrestling, and it's one that we did breaking news audio about a week ago, and of course it was bonus audio at the end of last week's drive through which was Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out on Raw. Yeah. And we covered that and the WWE's initial reaction and word that apparently came from the camp of Sasha Banks and Naomi. And now a few other things have happened. Have you been keeping up with this story? I Well, I've been out of town. You may have heard about that. So I didn't, I didn't keep up over the last couple of days with any late-breaking developments. I know they have been suspendified indefinitely, if not sooner. I have some quotes here. Let me read you this. Jim, this apparently is what Michael Cole said on SmackDown. And I watched this. You have to see him. He's like tweaking out. He can't stop like moving around. His hands are going and everything. <laughs> but again, tell me if you think this is a bit heavy. On the show, they said, Sasha Banks and Naomi let us all down. Their actions disappointed millions of WWE fans and their fellow superstars. So because of what Sasha and Naomi did this past Monday night, they have been suspended indefinitely. So what do you think of saying that they let us all down and they've disappointed their fans and the superstars? Well, that's directly from Vince, and it the, the psychology of it is that they have basically tried to group the WWE as a company and the fans together on the side of people who were let down and isolated Sasha and Naomi on the side of the people who let other people down forgetting the fact that they have already come out and said that this is was all uh, their refusal to do what we wanted them to do, they wouldn't be good trained fucking puppets or chimpanzees and follow along. And when we say jump, they say how high. That's the way they did it heavy-handedly the week before. And now Vince thinks that he will get sympathy, the company will get sympathy, that poor WWE, those two girls let them down. And that would have been the way to do it uh, uh, 30 years ago. You would, you would blame the wrestler and you would try to put yourself in the common position with the company in the common position with the fan and say, boy, we really wanted to bring you this match, folks, but they wouldn't let us, and we really, it, it, you, that's the, and it would work. Again, if the company and everybody running it had not been presented as evil heels that take advantage of the people's favorite wrestlers for 30 years. So, for all the same reasons that we said on the clip last week and the show last week and whatever, is any fan of the WWE buying the company line and siding with them and mad at Sasha and Naomi, or are they still going, well, yeah, I'm glad somebody stood up to these fuckers after all this time. Do they, do they not have the majority of the sentiment in their corner, Sasha and Naomi? It's a weird thing when people go to defending the company and the system that's at fault. Because even if you don't like the person, and even if your argument is you have to be reasonable, you have to work with them, the WWE reaction is the whole story here. It's not Sasha Banks saying, I'm going home, and it's not Naomi going with her. Well, let, let's face Sasha's going to Hollywood. Naomi may have a long detour at home. Sasha could do a lot of things. I told you, I'm not sure if you, because you, know, you don't watch a lot of the women's stuff, realize just how big of a star she was there. But all, all those women there, she's at that top level with those fans. Like Charlotte, yeah. her, Becky. Uh, really, that original NXT women's class that came up did have a few interesting things happen over the past few days. One, Snoop Dogg, who is the cousin of Sasha Banks. Cousin, cousin Snoop. He, on Instagram, put a picture of him talking with Sasha with the, uh, not a hashtag, but the description just says bloodline. So a little uh, toss there <laughs> to Roman Reigns, I guess. And also a... Quote here I'm seeing from Pat McAfee from his podcast. Let me read this. The Sasha Naomi thing? That was my first time hearing what Cole was saying live there. I have no idea what to think there. I have no clue. This is a very fascinating thing. She's a superstar. They were our champions. What's happening? 
I honestly have no idea what to believe in this whole thing. They keep me out of the loop on everything. I have no fucking idea while Cole was doing his thing. I was very fascinated. What is going on right now? I wish I had more answers for people. A couple of people asked me during my chat with Pat on Saturday, what was going on? It's like, fuck. I feel like you know more than I do, literally, as it was happening. And that was in reaction to people posting him sitting next to Michael Cole, reacting to Michael Cole saying this on SmackDown, and he had no idea what Michael Cole was going to say there. But that's also that's the longest I've ever heard anybody speak and not say anything. There was there was there was certainly no insight there into what his opinion of the whole thing is. You've never heard Derek Jeter. Yeah. You're right. Well, a lot of people don't think think it'd be like it is, but it do. So the other thing is the uh, New York Post put up a story today. Now they're covering this. Oh, for God's sake. Would, would, uh, 20 years ago, during the height of the Attitude Era, would if Steve Austin fucking walked out, would the New York Post have covered it? When 10 million people were watching every Monday night. If clickbait was as popular then as it is now, yes, they'd be covering it. <laughs> But the headline here is WWE's Sasha Banks Naomi pettiness won't fix the real problem. Well, so there it is. The New York Post now on the case. What are your thoughts now looking at this whole picture? And has the WWE done themselves any favors in their way of dealing with this? No, that's what I keep saying. And when we talked about Sasha and Naomi from their standpoint, yeah, it, the creative was the shits and what they were supposed to be doing didn't make any sense for them. And it's about damn time. Somebody stood up and, you know, put their foot down or whatever, because I've mentioned everybody's creative sucks and it it's, it's not going to change anything with, it might change something or it might even not. If the top gave Lashley or Brock or Roman or McIntyre. So, but not Sasha and Naomi. So that's not going to change anything, but like we said, if Sasha's got a backup and at least Naomi's husband still has a job, that's fine. But as far as the company, no, they look like shit. Because, again, they've taken the opportunity to damage their business on an ongoing basis by once again pissing off the fans, and especially the the hardcore ones, the only ones they've got left that really core 2 million people that watch WWE now and they've damaged the business by telling everybody again plain out reiterating it we tell these people everything to do on this program and they rehearse it nothing is spontaneous all this is meant to happen and that does a lot more damage cumulative damage damage in people's subliminal perception of the whole thing on an ongoing long-term basis, a lot more than they're going to lose money just because Sasha and Naomi ain't on the fucking card. So they shot themselves in the foot thinking again, because that's what Vince thought he was going to be the baby face with Brett screwed Brett. And then it didn't happen. He, he becomes a heel. His whole family has been heels for years. And now he's in the same place 30 years later, or whatever he thinks. He's going to be the baby faces and the fans want to take up for the wrestlers. They don't want to take up for the goddamn office. So that's the whole thing. 